Speed. Sound production, take one. Action! Welcome to the end of the Fangirls podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Lexi. And we're two girls with a slight obsession of everything pop culture. Today we're talking about Do Revenge, the movie of the month, oh, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It might be the movie of the month. It took Twitter by storm. It really did. It still is, honestly. And oh, for what? good reason. Yeah, it's the, I think it's the number one Netflix movie worldwide. Yeah, I saw that. It was really good. Dude, I did notice it. we gave it two different ratings, though. You know, I think I, I, after, I was thinking about this last night. I was like, should I bump it down a little? Like, in the moment, I was like, it's like the, probably one of the best teen movies I've seen oh, in a while. Oh, for sure. So I think I was just caught up in that. And then, like, looking back, I'm like. See, He's just a fork. <laughs> my thing was also, I watched half of it one day, and then I had to go out. So then I had to watch the second half the next day. And so then I feel like that kind of split it for me. Yeah. And I only caught the end part. And I have my opinions about it. So I ended up giving it three and a half. I gave it four and a half. Yeah. I could probably bump it down one to like four. Yeah. But as in the total aspect of it being one of the best teen films in the past decade, it deserves the four and a half. Honestly, it might deserve a five for being one of the best. Yeah. (laughs) Because there has been not a good (laughs) teen movie in a very long time. It's it's been a hot minute. I don't even remember the last good one. Neither do I. Like, they were all early 2000s. (laughs) Let's be real. The only one that is coming to mind is Easy A, which you haven't seen. Yeah. And well, maybe that's just because I just read about it. So, in regards to this movie. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, like. Well, everything lately has been Wattpad adaptations, which no hate to Wattpad. I'm on it. I write on it, so I can't say anything bad. But it's a lot of those adaptations. So you're getting, like, after and to all the boys I loved before in the kissing booth, and... Yeah. This is the first original screenplay in a while. Yeah. It's not, obviously, an adapted screenplay. Has the writer of this done anything else? Great question. I'm gonna look this up. She only did one other movie. She did Someone Great, which had Gina Rodriguez, DeWanda Wise, and Brittany Snow. Dewanda was in Jurassic Dominion. <laughs> I'm trying to think of someone great. I think. Yeah, okay, I've seen the trailer for it. I'm not a big fan of Liz I mean Gina Rodriguez, so I don't watch it. That's completely fair. <laughs> Just double checking. Yeah, oh, sorry, she's also done. For writer, she's also done Unpregnant, which I've never heard of. Me either. Um, and then she also... Oh, it has... um Cat from Euphoria. And then she also... Barbie! Did, we, we stan her. Yes, we do. But then she also did um, the writing on Thor Love and Thunder, which that's just a really interesting repertoire. But, like, good for Apparently, her. it's really funny. Quite honestly, like, she honestly is pretty good. Like, I kind of hope she does more in this genre. Genre? Yeah, definitely. Because we definitely need more. Um, I don't know how we want to talk about this. I think just overall thoughts. I mean, if you watch the movie, you clearly know what happens. <laughs> If you're uh, watching this, I'd hope you've already seen yeah. it. There, and you should also know there was a lot that happened. It felt so like much. three, like three acts. Yeah, right? it really okay. did. I think that was also because like they did split it up in a way. Like they had like summer, mm-hmm. spring, fall, or like did not pay attention to the timestamps. I guess it would be. But I know spring, that summer, fall, something like that. I don't know. It was summer, in some weird order. I think it was. It was. I just know there was summer, and I'm pretty sure there was was spring, but spring doesn't come after summer, so I'm assuming it would have had to go summer, fall, winter then. Maybe summer, winter, spring. 
Maybe there was a fall in between there. We must it might have. No, it might have been summer, fall, winter because fall would have been when they had to go back to school. Yeah. And then but winter was the ending. Either way. It doesn't really <laughs> matter. No. <laughs> um, should we talk about the main cast, though? Because. Yeah. Okay. So. I'd just like to say we were baited a little bit. It's fine. Yeah. I thought Maya and Cammy were oh. going to kiss. <laughs> okay. Wait. I was telling. That's literally my letterbox for you. I know. Because anytime, even in SVU. All of the promos. <laughs> there's. Anytime I see two strong female leads that become friends, I just expect them to guess. I think it's my toxic trait. (laughs) Also, it doesn't help that one of the main stills was, like, Cammie's character laying her head on Maya's shoulder and Maya, like, combing her hair. I'm like, you guys are going to kiss. Like, this is, like, an afterglow scene. Yeah. It was not. (laughs) It was most definitely not. I was very disappointed. Yes. Like, it became very clear about, like, 10-15 10-15 minutes in the movie that that wasn't what was going to happen yeah no so like Maya Hawk, Camila Mendez you owe us an apology they could be like one of those like actors who just give us the content off screen yes please just saying <laughs> the chemistry was palpable man yeah <sighs> really was <laughs> it, yeah they, they did a great job casting them, too. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they worked really, really well together. I want more of them in something together. I was uh, uh, going to be honest. When I saw the casting, I was slightly hesitant. That's Just fair. Because I think, obviously, when I think of Cammie, I think Veronica. And then when I think of... Um, Maya, Maya, you think Robin. Think Robin. Two totally and they're different. Totally different, people. yeah. And they're still totally different in this movie. yeah. But it worked really well for them. It did. Yeah. I also just feel like it's kind of hard to, like, when the only, like, I don't want to say the only prominent things they've done, but, like, the things they're best known for are teen shows. True. So you're like, how well are they going to do in something that is more still teen. mature? <laughs> it's still teen, but it's definitely more mature with the yeah. amount of words and language they decided to use yes which i loved anytime you can throw it a little see you next tuesday i am in for it there um yeah i think they did really well i think that was really good casting it was also maya hawk i'm in love with you i just discovered that yeah even though this was a very similar character robin it was. It was very different. Because, but, like, then again, her character was playing a part. Yeah. But it was still very interesting to say Maya play something that wasn't her. So that's why, like, when we get into actors. the section yeah. where we talk about, like, other movies, it kind of paralleled. That's why it reminds me a lot of Clueless and Brittany Murphy's character. They kind of feel like the same person to me. But we'll okay. talk about that more later. I can see that. Yeah. I can see her being Caddy. Katie? Yes. Katie Harrington? Okay. I can see that. Um, Max is trash. The <laughs> actor played him well enough, but he was trash. I f- everyone was like, he's from Euphoria. And that, like, it took me a second, and then I remembered, oh, Kat dated him? Was that in season one? It was either in the season one or beginning of season two. Okay. Um, someone who, like, really caught me off guard, though, was Sophie Turner. I know. That, She's that was so much I have watched this year. And, like, she just keeps following me, and I don't... It freaks me out every time she shows up. It's like, also she's fine. It's just I never know she's going to be in something, and she just pops up. Yeah. But it's so weird, too, because I go Game of Thrones, even though I've never seen Game of Thrones. This is not Game of Thrones! No! <laughs> Very much not. But her character was really funny in this. It's so <laughs> funny. I like, I think it made it funnier that they let her keep her accent. Yes. And it just made it so much better. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry, her calling Drea cunt in British is so funny. Perfect. Perfect. Her scene was so good. It was. 
And then the girl just cried. And she's like, I would know if she was doing it. Don't you think I'd know? Um, also, queen of the 90s. Queen of the... Bad girl. I can't even just, like, say, like, queen of, like, rom-coms. Because she did it all. Yeah. She was Daphne. She was Buffy. She was everybody. And then Sarah Michelle Gellar, the 90s it girl, just here. And now was that, that was not in the trailer, correct? I don't think so. I only found out about it the other day. Yeah, when I watched it and she popped up, I was like, shut the fuck up. One, she's glowing. (laughs) Two, she looks so hot. I did see something. Okay, so I read where I saw TikTok. So she took a major break from acting. Yeah. I forgot what caused her to have her break. I think it was because she wanted to be with her kids. But there was a reason why. Something happened. You sent me the TikTok. I did? Okay. (laughs) So she was on, apparently she was on a sitcom with Robin Williams. And that was a, never never even heard of it. That was around the time that uh, Robin Williams passed away. And it made her realize that she wanted to spend more time with her family. Yeah, her son was like six weeks old or something, she said. I also think, like, Robin Williams passed away, like, a few years ago. No, Robin Williams passed away in, like, 2014. <laughs> That's almost eight years. That, no, that is eight years ago. Oh, that makes so, sense. She really hasn't been in much since 2014. And for this to be your comeback, go you. You'll love to see it. It was good. It was iconic. Like, just coming back with, like, the genre that made you yeah famous, was, basically. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and it felt very much like her Cruel Intentions character. It did. Honestly, you could tell oh, me this was, name? like, Catherine. Thank you. Wow. Honestly, you could tell me this was, like, a sequel to that. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Because she's still kind of, like, unhinged. <laughs> Just she's a, a little. little less unhinged than she is in Cruel Intentions. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe but like she's the one who needs to go to the rehab for the coke addiction. <laughs> so true. No missed opportunity to not have her wearing a cross necklace. Oh my god, yeah. That's what we needed. That would have been the Easter egg. <sighs> okay, bring it back. We need that for real. Yeah, there are some like very notable faces. It took me a second. I'm like, what do I know? Tara from and I had to look it up and she's 13 reasons why and I'm like that's Girl. why I know you Girl. <laughs> I didn't finish it okay are we neither surprised? did I but I still knew okay it's been years I watched it when it came out okay I don't really like her that's funny. um <laughs> yeah really like pretty solid cast actually even though like we mainly only see like Camila, Maya, and that's mainly it. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know where to go with this. <laughs> no, you're good. I mean, like, do we start talking about the movie? Shall do you wanna, we? Wait, do you want to continue talking about the rest of the cast? Because they're all in yes, iconic you, teen things. <laughs> yes. So, okay, hold, hold on. I saved it. I was going to say, I'm like, it's on TikTok. It is on TikTok. Thank you to we love TikTok. not so critically acclaimed <laughs> on TikTok. So I feel Cammy like we've Mendes. referenced them before on here. We probably have. So, Cami Med does the girl from 13 Reasons Why. And then, hold on, let me pull up IMDb. Fuck, where did it go? Okay. my phone froze okay we're back montana is in pretty little liars original sin okay the that's why jenna likes her so much i'm like she didn't have much screen time why are you so obsessed yes i get it now but i think that's her no that's her i um bailey madison is yeah um the girl that plays Megan is from Alexa and Katie, which was also on Netflix. She was also on Phoebe Halloween. 
and lab rats. So she's been working for a while. Then we talked about Max is from Euphoria. Then Elliot is from Outer Banks. Carissa is from. What did they say? So I wasn't actually. Oh, Love Victor. Yeah. And then the guy that played Russ. Thank you. Was from Miss Marvel. And was. Oh, he was apparently also into All the Boys I Loved as well. I think that covers the main cast. Oh, Gabby. Who was he in All the Boys? I don't really know. And Gabby was in West Side Story. She's probably fairly new. And, okay, to be honest, even though I was with expecting Eleanor and Drea to kiss, I'm glad Eleanor got with Max's sister. I did like them. They were cute. Um, they were I did cute. want a bit more of them, though. Yes. And I didn't like how we only got to see the relationships, like, blossom in the end credits. Right? Oh, I'm I mean, sorry. like, at least we saw it, but, like, still. Yeah. The last person, wait, the girl from, who is Sophie Turner's, like, sister? In Game of Thrones? No, 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 no. The, or was that her friend? The one that was, like. Oh, her friend. Oh, okay. She's from Dynasty. Okay. I was going to say, I'm like, I don't think she has a sister. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know what they were like. Well, she would have had an English accent. You know, we're a little slow. That's fine. <sighs> yeah. So, stacked cast. Very stacked cast. I think the last time Netflix had a cast that stacked was Don't Look Up. And that movie was mediocre. This surpassed it. <laughs> oh, by far. <laughs> Um, yeah, iconic cast. I need more movies with this tech casting, honestly. Honestly, we just need more teen movies. In general? Yes. But, like, ones that have that nostalgia factor. Yes. Give me the unhingedness of the 2000s. I don't yes. care if it's mildly offensive. That's what makes them fun. They don't have to be morally okay. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, was John Tucker Must Die, like, like a good movie in that sense? No. But it was so fun, and it was great. And you know what? I'm okay with a little bit of that. I'm okay with a little, like, sexism in oh, yeah. a good teen movie. Which is horrible to say, but I don't need a super woke teen movie. I just want to have a good time for, like, two hours. I think we started to learn woke is not that funny. No. Sorry. Controversial opinion. Sorry if you disagree, but... Um, Because I'm sorry, like, stuff like Mean Girls would probably never get made today. But, like, you can't imagine the 2000s without it. No. And they did, like, a really good job of making it like, was it offensive at all? I just don't know. I don't think so. I think, like, there were, like, parts maybe, like, Max doing the whole men for feminism or something like that. Like, that was definitely, like, a thing, but it was played for laughs, and it worked well. So well. I can see where that might offend sensitive people, but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, he is douchey enough that he would do that, absolutely. Yeah, you have, it's just one of those movies where you just have to, like, look everything from a comedy aspect. Like, yeah. they're not, their intention's not to offend people, but. It's just a good time, and I think that's, like, a good, like, I think this movie is, like, a good, my brain is not working it's tonight. Okay. I am at <laughs> zero energy. What is the word I'm thinking of? A good example that you can have a good, fun teen movie Mm-hmm. And not have to be super progressive or woke about it, but yes. you don't have to be offensive. They found the very happy medium. They really did. And it's very well done. Like, it was just enough of, like, modernization that it worked. Yes. Um. Also, Meme Central. So many, like, good things. Like, that one of Cammy being, like, I'm just going to keep calling her Cammy. I'm sorry. But she, when she's just, like, I'm shocked. I am shocked. 
And, like, that's just, like, become a thing now on Twitter. So good. The, what was it? Someone tweeted the video of them when they were opening um, the greenhouse of Eleanor and Drea. And they're like, oh, and this, said this, this is what Stan would have looked like. Some, they said sometimes. I was like, ma'am, time. are you really on Stan Twitter if that's not yeah. what you are 24-7? That's all the time, man. Oh, so good. Also, can we just talk about my favorite character for a second? Uh, Oscar winner Olivia Coleman, the emotional support beater dragon. Yes. Because I was obsessed. I lost it when she said that. But she's like, stupid. what is this dragon thing? Or like, dino- no, she called it like a dinosaur. She's like, what is this dinosaur? And she's like, oh, that's Oscar winner oh, nice. Olivia Coleman. She's my emotional support dragon. And like, I'm like, I yes. love it. Everything. Slime. Reminds me of when I got a goldfish and named it Goldie Hawn, honestly. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I feel like we can't talk about this beat by beat. (laughs) No. There's just so much that... Yeah. Okay, I don't want this to come off wrong, but I feel like it was a very long movie like it felt long but I don't think it was necessarily in a bad way yeah like it definitely felt longer than I think it was but I wasn't bored during it like I wasn't constantly checking it but then when I left I'm like that was only like two hours like it felt like it was longer I just feel like there was so much packed into it that I'm just like oh yeah like that's why I said it felt like the the three acts yeah I'm back to the third act I was like we're still going yeah I that is kind of maybe why I gave it three and a half, because I think oh. I would have given it four if... What, it was I, two hours and ten minutes, I think? Something or two like hours? That. I think it was two hours, like an hour and fifty-eight or something like that. But I feel like the ending just got kind of drawn out and just, like, got a little too long. And, okay. like, I get they had to do the reveal and everything. Yeah. And have the downfall of that. But there was still, like, 45 minutes left at that point. Because that's where I picked yeah. up. I think it was at, like, 50 minutes when I picked back up. And, like, five minutes later, like, that was when the reveal happened. And I'm like, yeah. we still have half a movie left. 118 minutes. So oh just shy of two hours. It's crazy. Oh, I guess I can read kind of my <laughs> notes that I took. Oh, uh, yes, please. I love reading my fun little notes that I have when I watch a movie. Uh, I wrote makeover montage with exclamation points. Then I said, Maya and Cammie had such great chemistry. This feels like an early 2000s teen movie and I'm obsessed. Cammie has great comedic timing, which kind of surprised me because I feel like she doesn't always get the opportunity to show that in Riverdale. She just gets snippy like one-liners, but she yeah. actually had really good comedic timing. Um, and then I said, so funny they have to give Maya Hawk tips on being cool when she's the coolest person ever. Uh, and then I talked about Oscar winner Olivia Coleman. <laughs> Uh, let's go lesbians. Oh yes. shit, the twist. Has Eleanor been playing her this whole time? And then I'm a teenage girl. We're psychopaths. I loved that quote. I thought it was funny. And then I also said absent parent trope is a staple in all teen movies. And then I also said Maya Hawk world domination. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think my biggest note, and I I suck at taking notes because I also suck at like fully paying attention on things. It's just um, because I started like a film Instagram that I actually wanted to like give like a better review than just this movie was great. <laughs> so I took some notes. Don't blame you. Um, I think my biggest note was like <laughs> not to be completely like Riverdale fans. I wish this is what Barack Lodge was like. <laughs> no, because when it started, I'm like, you could tell me this was. Veronica Lodge mm-hmm. in New York and I would believe you. Yes. Like it felt Miami. real enough. Well, oh, it, while she was like in New when York, she was but, in New York. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um Yeah, it was just too So, Roberto? For real. Take notes like you do with every other show. No Complete side note. Is Riverdale ever coming back? I don't even know, man. Because I feel like they should be filming by now, and they're just not. <laughs> yeah. Or are they going to start filming in October, though? I feel like that's usually when they start recording. Filming. Really? I, I have no idea. And then I feel like they'll aim for a January release. Great. Thank you. 
why do we still watch the show? That's the real question. Because I feel like this last season is going to be good. <laughs> it's probably not, but it's going to be fine. No, I'm very entertained by the whole plot. I forgot. What I'm never going escaping to be. this. I'm never escaping this show. No. It's they went back to the fifties. How did we go from a dead body to time travel? I don't know, but they're in the fifties. <laughs> We'll have this conversation later. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, even if you've seen, like, our Riverdale discussions, I always say, like, Veronica was my favorite in season one, and they really yeah, ruined her. they ruined her so And, like, bad. I just, I didn't necessarily hate Cammy. I just was, like, I need her to be in something better. This was so much better. <laughs> because, yeah, she also did that other movie, I can't remember the name of. But it, it was, was a Netflix movie. I, yeah, or, hang on. I have wait, her there was up. two. I'm thinking Dangerous Lies. Yes. Um, and that one wasn't bad, but it was very no. lifetime. Yes, definitely. And like she was fine, but like this like really showed that she has actual acting chops that aren't <laughs> just put to waste as being yeah. a snarky mean girl. Because like she kind of was that here, but. There was more to her. There yeah. were more layers. Whereas Definitely. Veronica doesn't have any layers anymore, unfortunately. I just realized there was no parents in this movie. Yeah, that's why I said absent parent trope. Because <laughs> there was not one. They, also, an article I was reading said that Sarah Michelle Gellar is the only adult in this movie. And if you think about it, yeah. Because you hear Maya Hawk's mom, but you don't see her. No, but I'm trying to think of just other people at school. There was no other adults at school. Not that we saw, I don't think. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, there was, like, the principal and stuff. Yeah, as I'd say, who announced Max? But, um, like, as, like, actual characters? Yeah, I think. not much. Okay. Because I was just now thinking of Cammie's mom. But we Sorry, never see yes. her. We never see her. But Who's going to call her Cammie at this point? I know. But I'll Drea also call is her Maya. middle class, correct? Yes. So she's... Because her mom was working a lot to afford for her to go to Rosa. Yeah, and she didn't want her friends to think that she wasn't rich and all that. Yeah, okay. Because she wants to go to Yale, and Rose Hill's like the... The school it's for to her to that. go. Right, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Iconic. Really. Shall we talk about the twist? Yeah, because... Okay, so... I took, I had to wait to tell Sam this because, once again, it took her two days to finish. I was literally stalking your letterbox. I was like, did she just not tell me that she just didn't finish it? <laughs> I'm um, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, like, that's what I do, too. Whenever I know that you're watching a movie, I'll, like, go, like, wait for your review. I'm like, has she finished yet? <laughs> um... I'm so, everyone always seems to get the plot twist. I never do. I like, I don't watch movies to figure them out. Like when it comes to murder mysteries, I really don't watch to figure it out. I'm ready for the plot twist. I like want to be like mind fucked. Yeah. So when this happened, I was like, oh shit, like this is actually really good. And then I didn't really see anyone else tweet about it. And I was like, oh, yeah. like, people saw it, like saw it coming. So then when you said you didn't see it coming, I was like, oh, okay, this is good. <laughs> Because also Jenna tweeted, she was doing a live watch thread, and this was before I had even started the movie, Mm -hmm. and I saw it earlier in the day, and she's like, oh my gosh, that plot twist. So I kept scrolling, I'm like, I don't want to be spoiled. So I knew there was a plot twist coming, and then when it actually happened, I'm like, I did not see that. Yeah. So it was really well done. It Uh, was, and I liked how, like, Cammy, Freya, whatever, (laughs) said things that pointed it like out like narcissists don't like what did they she said something about narcissist it went during the makeover sequence and like it was a direct it like was her oh hang on i know what it is narcissist quote <laughs> one second ma'am There is so many <laughs> quotes. We all love an emotional terrorist. That's a very Veronica. Like, narcissists are too busy thinking about themselves to realize they're being played. Exactly. And I was like, wow. Yeah. That was so good. That was really good foreshadowing. Yeah. 
Yeah. I feel like it almost should be obvious. Right. But <laughs> I don't know. Something about the character of Eleanor just, like, sunk really well into it that I didn't even put it together. Yeah. But I feel like it should be obvious. <laughs> but it just yeah. wasn't. No, it... She and I don't just, know why it wasn't. It just worked. It's because Maya Hawk is a great up. actor, and That's she hit it so true. well. <laughs> she hit that very well. Yeah. But there was other lines, which... Okay. I'm not going to... If you've seen it, you know the montage. that there was, yeah. there was probably, like, four scenes that kind of foreshadowed it. Yeah. I think it was something like that. Um... How did Eleanor find Drea? Oh, from the sex tape? Nah, no, ye- Yes, but also I think because of the tennis camp. She, like, found that she's going to the tennis camp and then gotcha, found her, but I gotcha. don't know how she found that. Okay. Maybe she just, like, stalks her on Instagram. Maybe. If it makes sense. What's what's another movie that they come up with like in this entire plot to like screw someone over and do it like in the to screw over another girl, not like the relationship sense. I feel like there's another one that I'm, I'm thinking, just thinking of. of mean Girls. I feel like there's another one. I just can't think of it. And then John Tucker must die, obviously. Yeah. Look up revenge movies and see what comes out. Honestly, that's great. <laughs> Let's look up teen revenge movies. Um, teen comedies. F the prom. Yeah, well, we're not gonna talk about that movie. It will come to me later. Yeah, I'm not thinking of anything. Oh, maybe it's Heather's. I yeah. <laughs> Probably. Probably. See, I don't ever think of um Heather's as like a revenge movie though. I just think of it as a murder. <laughs> Cuz it it's not is. even really revenge. It's straight up murder. <laughs> no, it, it it is. Um, I just read the plot of Job It's so good. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> you should watch it. I it's, actually will. It's um, it's like inspired by Heather's. Like it's flat out been said. It's inspired by Heather's, which I think makes it incredible. I love that. Okay. It's like a more comedic version of it, though. Oh, that is surely bad. <laughs> okay. Well, adding it to the watch list. Thank you. Um, I guess we should actually say what the plot twist is. That might... Yeah, okay. So, I mean, from the trailer, we all thought it was going to be getting revenge on the other significant other kind of thing. They were going to fall in love, but... Yeah. Um, but... So... Eleanor's character she wants to get revenge on a girl that called... She spread, a, she spread a rumor yeah. that Eleanor tried to hold her down and, yeah, like, kiss her true. and all that. So, and then that, like, ruined Eleanor's life and, like, reputation and all that. So she switched mm-hmm. schools and everything. Yes. But she wants revenge for that. Yes. And it's found out that um, Carissa? Yes. Carissa's not the girl that did it. It was actually Drea, and Drea is too much of a narcissist to remember this. Um, yeah. So Eleanor tries to get close to Drea, which they obviously do, and Eleanor then tries to destroy Drea's life. You know, the more you think about it, there is actually some pretty good foreshadowing it. Because, like, when Drea walks up to Chris and is like, oh, Carissa, right? And she's like, we know each other. Like, do you not remember camp? We went to camp together. Yeah. And that's where this all went down with Eleanor and yeah, it's really good. Like, it'd be a fun watch back just to see if there are any, like... Yeah, definitely. ...big hints about it. Um, 
because what did I say? Just even like Carissa being like to Dre, like, what are you talking about? That was you. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what? <laughs> what did they? They called her like nosy Nora or something like that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because she had like a nose job or whatever I think it was or no she had a bad nose and then she had a nose job and I think that's why Dre didn't recognize her yeah Something noses can change ya let me tell you they can <laughs> they really can um yeah no I was really impressed with the plot twist me too but the plot twist what came like a half like halfway through yeah almost exactly yeah So then, the rest was Elma plotting her revenge on Drea. Yeah. Which was, once again, great. And Another, like, qualm I had with that, though. I wanted more of a... Oh, my God. <laughs> Cannot think of words. More of a reconciliation. Because all we got was, like, so are we okay now? Yeah, we're good. And then they just went yeah. to doing what they're doing. And I'm like, I kind of wanted a bit more. Like, you kind of ruined her life. And she, like, kept going. Like, yeah. Like, she li- lied to Drea that she told... What was the guy that Drea was seeing? Max. Russ. No, no, Russ. Russ? I was going to say Russ, Russ. And I was like, there's no way. It's Russ. I mean, Russ. <laughs> um... Russ and which she didn't and then proceeded to fucking T-bone her and send her to the hospital I didn't like I think that's what really brought it down for me I did not like that scene like I just felt like that went a little too yeah a little too much especially because like and that's I think also why I didn't like the whole like how they just got over it so quickly because like you could have killed her yeah like that just went a little too much and, wh- and that's what was the reason for her to do it? So she could have the sympathy from her old friends? I was like, all right, that, that's a lot. Yeah, because she's like, you're not going to, they're not going to accept you back into your circle if for no reason. Like, you have to give them a reason to do it. And then all the texts started coming, which, like, it worked. Yeah. But surely there could have been a better way than almost killing her. Yeah. Also, you always know when a car crash is coming because they film from the passenger side just straight out the window. And you just, you know something's going to happen. Yeah, been. always. It gave yeah. me very much um, Quinn for Bray vibes. Yes. I also was thinking Nashville. But yeah, I bring it but up we're not going to talk trauma. about that. I'll, we'll talk about Quinn for Bray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she makes it out alive, just like Dre. Yeah, yeah. not St. Verena's. Okay, great. Um, Uh. (laughs) Yeah, I think that was just kind of, and, like, then it just got kind of drawn out, and that's, I kind of just think, where I kind of lost me, and I think it would have got four stars if it wasn't Mm -hmm. for that. That's fair. But when it's really only that one part, your movie's pretty good. (laughs) Yeah. Because it didn't ruin it, really. Like, I loved the beginning, I thought, like, the whole lead-up to that was really, really good, but I just didn't like that part. Yeah. And then it just kept going. <laughs> like, every time I thought it was over, another scene would happen. And then it would be over again. I'm like, yeah. okay, we're done. And then it would be another scene. Like, no. they did that, like, three times. Because they did it with, they ended the thing, like, exposing Max. And then it ended up, like, I thought that was the end. And then they went to Drea talking to Sarah Michelle Geller. Mm-hmm. And then that ended... <laughs> And then all of a sudden it went to the montage at the end of the two relationships. That ended, and then we got another Max scene. And I'm just, I'm just like, bro, end your movie. I'm trying to remember what happened at the end. I know they got the video. Oh, they filmed Max talking about it. That was, I liked that part, actually. That was kind of fun. Oh, that's John Tucker. Oh, that's John Tucker must die. Okay. Don't they film him? I think so. And they post it? Yeah. Yeah. This movie really is just like chock full of Which is I love. I love it. I think that's why I think you'd like Easy A because it is it's more um referencing to eighties movies. Okay. Which is maybe why I love it so much, but it's kind of a similar vibe. And it's got Stanley Tucci. 
that's fair. I just don't really love Emma Stone. I know, but Stanley Tucci. I know. Um, I'm so tired. My apologies. Um, are there any other like big things we want to talk about? I feel like this is such a low energy episode for some reason when I'm actually like very yeah yeah. and like was excited for it, but it's a Monday. It's yeah, it's Monday. It's nine forty four. Shut the fuck up! I didn't even realize that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. There's just so much good that goes on though, so it's like hard to talk. Like you have yeah. to just watch, just watch the movie and then just come back. watch the movie. We did get a makeover montage, which I am always a fan yeah. of. Yeah. I love a good makeover montage. They also the outfits were great. Were great. Also, the soundtrack was great. Right? Yeah. And I never pay attention to soundtracks like, in the movies, but I was like, why did I kind of get emotional when the Happy Year Than Ever sequence started happening? Because it was emotional. That's why. Yeah. Flashbacks, man. Get me every time. Yeah. And I also liked the scene of. Elmore driving to Brutal. I was like, Yeah, wow. I also like how, like, they, like, mixed a lot of the um, eras. Like, they had yeah. cool, I think it's dreams. And it's like the changing as it seems love in possible way. That one. That's okay. how it goes. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know the words. Um, I think that's also maybe in She's All That. I don't know. Don't quote me. Um, but then they also had I'm a Bitch, oh, which is my favorite scene. That was great. It was I was going to, I was amazing. actually recording myself to sing it to you. And then I was like, no, I want her to be a surprise that this isn't it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love a good lip sync scene. Yeah. It was so good. I wanted it to be longer. I'll live. But I have it saved in my camera roll, and I just watch it for, like, a quick serotonin boost. Of course. <laughs> so good. But, yeah, the outfits in this were phenomenal. Because I'm even thinking about the end scene where they're singing together, and, like, Maya's earrings are just so cute. Like, they're big, like, sunflowers. Mm-hmm. Like, those are so cute. Even, like, the school uniforms were really cute. Yeah. I'm like, this is so unrealistic. Uh, so. I'm I, so it was, for wait, it, but it's It was so even unrealistic. more unrealistic, because I'm pretty sure... For the most part, everyone was, like, purple, green, purple, green. Yeah. There was some, I think, sitting next to each other, like, two greens or something like that. I'm but also for the like, most why part, are you both purple and green? Shouldn't you be, like, your uniform is green on the top, purple on the bottom, or vice versa? Like, you shouldn't just get to choose which school color you want to wear every day. <laughs> but the fact that their school colors were, like, lilac and, like, mint green. It's, yeah. It's <laughs> ridiculous, and I loved it. It's it's very actual. And I like the, the, rest little, of this the movie. little shawls all the girls had. Yeah. Like, this is this is like. And then they had the berets. <sighs> it's so good. Oh. I think that's really what probably pulled like that sells like the color pop. And that's I why will I say, that. there is the scene of them all sitting in the auditorium. And I don't know why, but it makes me feel so uneasy. Just, like, all, like, the white walls and then just them all very monochromatic. Yes. Against. And I'm just, like, this is giving me, like, Hunger Games or yeah, it was some, like, creepy show where someone is going to get murdered. Definitely. <laughs> it was just a very, cre- it was very cool toned, I think, is what made it weird. But. Yes. Not a bad way. Just, I noticed that. I'm, like, I don't like this. I feel unsettled. <sighs> it was just too good. It was very good. Um, do you want to go over the pop culture references? Yes, because I there noticed a quite lot. a few of them, and then we talked more about them before we started filming. And did you write them down? I did. I wrote down the ones that we like actually like. Do you want me to put okay. them in a doc? Maybe <laughs> that would help, right? Um. <laughs> I think some of them, like, you can talk about, too. Apologies, apologies. 
I'm just putting in the Emmys one because I don't want to make another. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do I have the same one written down twice? I do. Awesome. Because I covered that up with a different one. Whoopsie. <laughs> this is so unorganized. It's so lovely. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, there is like a lot, a lot of teen movie references, a lot of like early 2000s, 90s uh-huh. ones. Um, the one I noticed like right away as soon as it happened, I'm like, oh my god, is when Drea walks into Eleanor's birthday party. I'm like, this is the exact scene of Regina walking into Katie's party and Mean Girls. Like, just, like, walking up, nobody wanted her there. Like, just, she was not invited. You haven't seen Mean Girls in a while, have you? No, and I really think Mean Girls is overrated, unpopular opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just the vibe I get. Also, like, Jerea kind of feels like a Regina towards the end. Maybe not as hardcore, but, like, I kind of get that vibe. I kind of get that vibe. I said I, sh- I felt I was feeling Katie Harrington. I thought you said that for Maya. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel Just, like, like Rio is, all of like, her friends, Having all of her friends turn on her. Like, I feel like that's more Regina. Because at the end of Mean Girls, like, Katie is the leader. And Regina is kind of kicked out. And I guess that's kind of the role... Eleanor took. No, I see her yeah, more she is I could see that too. She's like a mix of the two. Okay. Not fair. Yeah. Um, then the other one I noticed, um, when Russ and Drea are having the paint fight and like kissing in the warehouse or whatever, it's like so much like the ten things I hate about mm-hmm. you whole scene. Which is like one of the most romantic scenes ever. Just saying. <laughs> I have never wanted to be Julie Stiles so bad in my life. <laughs> um, that's great. And then I'll also talk about this one. Because we were talking about it earlier. The makeover scene is like clueless. Mm-hmm. I noticed that a lot. But then also I was saying how I think Eleanor is a lot like Brittany Snow's character Ty. Just like coming in like very tomboyish. Very plain. And then she becomes gorgeous as if she like she was already but like yeah she's pretty snow but then she becomes like so pretty to everybody else and she's wearing all these nice clothes and she's fancy and I, that's like exactly what happened with eleanor Brittany murphy yes <laughs> i was like wait i think you just said the wrong thing. <laughs> i totally did it's okay john tucker must talk <laughs> that's yeah i think that's what i was thinking so sorry Brittany murphy gotta put respect on your name Yes. Yes, Brittany Murphy. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I definitely get yeah. Like, even, like, the haircut and all that, like, they yeah. do that in Clueless, like, yeah. But I didn't, because other people, you said, have been pointing out that Cher and Dion are, like, the Drea and Eleanor this, and I don't see that. No. Yeah. Especially just because of the, um, class between Tara yeah. and... Drea, like Sharon, I think Dion were on the same level of class. Where oh, Drea's wait. mom is clearly Drea making and money. Tara. I thought it was yeah. Drea and Eleanor. No, Drea I and still Tara. don't see it with Drea and Tara. No, I also don't think they were close enough to be like like yeah. they didn't even really seem like they liked each other when they were friends. For fashionable reasons, yes. Yes. But other than that, I don't see it. No, I think also they give like. Tara similar hairstyles to Dion at least like with the long hair down and, like the bright the, and stuff yeah. but like other than that I don't really see the similarities in the friendships no like Sharon Dion are friendship goals I don't want to be friends with Tara or Drea really no and Dion doesn't steal Cher's boyfriend right no, no. Dion's with like the same guy the whole the movie the entire movie okay that's more Brit- Healthier. Yeah, Brittany Murphy tries to steal. Okay. They would have been a cuter couple. I know it would have been like Loki and Sus, but that's for another time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. Um, and then also I'll talk about Jawbreaker because you haven't seen that. Yeah. But so in Jawbreaker, it has Courtney is the main girl. Um, she's played by Rose Byrne. No. Rose yes. McGowan. Rose McGowan. I <laughs> who's Rose Byrne? I have no idea. Uh, neighbors, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Rose McGowan. <laughs> God. Anyway, so she is like the head of the friend group, and they kidnap um, this one girl, Liz. They stuff her in the trunk, put a jawbreaker in her mouth as a gum, as like a gag, and they take her out for breakfast on her birthday as like a surprise. They try to fake kidnap her. She dies, obviously, but then <laughs> someone else like witnesses this or whatever, um, like witnesses them hiding it up or whatever. So Courtney lets her into the clique. And they turn her into, like, one of them. Kind of like a plastic. And they make her oh, okay. pretty and fancy and popular and all that. So she doesn't tell anybody. And that's, I think, what... And Oh, sorry. And then um, her name's Fern. <laughs> is the girl I let into the clique. Okay. Um, and she ends up becoming more popular than Courtney. And gets all the guys. Like, all of that. It's been a while since I've seen Jawbreaker. I'm so sorry. But she becomes, like, more popular. And I feel like that's what... Eleanor is like she became more popular than Drea and Drea is the one who like let her in kind of into that world yeah. and yeah okay and how do you see Jawbreaker I think you'd like it it's very fun it's it's ridiculous but it's fun I like it's ridiculous. like the perfect unhinged 90s movie okay I like that yeah um <sighs> Heather's also yeah for has the revenge plot yeah I see it but I also just don't think revenge when I think Heather's because I don't no. think there was revenge to be had she was just pissed at her and Jane yeah her. but I can see it vibe wise yes like the little yes. pleated, like plaid skirts and all that I do get that vibe and like a very clicky thing uh huh. I guess, like, yeah, you can kind of call it revenge, but... Yeah. I don't see it super much, but I can definitely no. see where some of the inspiration was taken. Also, I just yeah. feel like the dark humor kind of did translate here, so I do kind of get that vibe. Definitely. Also, you just think Heathers and Winona Ryder, obviously, Stranger Things, so kind of has, like, a little tie there. Yeah. Um, uh, what else was I? Oh, I immediately, as soon as anyone does a convertible montage with two girls, I just think Velma and Louise. Which you haven't seen. I know, I haven't seen. I need you to watch it. Also, I I felt it for a little bit of the plot, even though, like... Yeah, because you said that to me in the middle of it when I was watching. You asked me if I, like, saw that. Yeah, just... And I, like... like, Even though Drea did not get sexually assaulted. Yeah. Um, But she... Form of sexual assault, cyberbullying yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um. It definitely wasn't like identical, but like once you like mentioned it and I like started watching, I'm like actually I can kind of see that because yeah. like they're not like in Thelma and Louise, they're not they're only doing Thelma's revenge, I guess. Okay. Whereas they're doing both revenge in this, but that whole end scene, so Thelma and Louise. Yeah. It was great. But yeah, I can definitely see like the ties with that, and also just like the friendship and like. Mm-hmm. coming together and all that definitely yeah. um yes. oh, never I've been never, pissed yeah, you've never, never seen, seen. Never. um so in that drew barrymore's character goes undercover at the high school to get like a good scoop um and she's undercover trying to get like so she was bullied in high school and so she wants to go back and like make a better life for herself and kind of appease her teenage self and I think that's kind of what Eleanor did here oh, okay. she's getting I don't want to say like revenge I guess but like because that's yeah. not what Drew Barrymore did but like kind of make up for what happened years ago and I think that's what Eleanor tried to do here okay. which I mean she succeeded yeah <laughs> like good for her Honestly, she was dedicated though. Um, and then John Tucker must die. Oh, you've got Fatal Attraction as well. Oh, I haven't seen Fatal Attraction either. You've never seen Fatal Attraction? 
now. I have, you know I'm not a movie girl. It's okay. I don't know if I ever actually finished it because the bunny boiling scene scared me. Um. Oh, do you not know that? They, yeah, she goes crazy and, like, boils the kid's bunny. It's okay. We watch Yellow Jackets and... <laughs> well, me and is you literally killed a rabbit in her backyard and served it for dinner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That show is amazing. It um, is. Yeah. Um, you said Eleanor is like Glenn Close because she becomes obsessed with getting revenge on Drea and Glenn gets obsessed with getting, getting revenge, revenge on okay. the husband's wife. All uh, the more reason I'm scared of him. He just always plays kind of crazy characters. And is that Michael he, Douglas? Yes, and he has always very scary sex scenes. <laughs> like oh, Captain sorry. Zeta Jones. Blink yeah! You need to be with Alexi instead. <laughs> For real, he's not going to make it much longer, but then again, his dad made it to like 100. <laughs> True. I will still be available. <laughs> yes. Um. And then there's John Tucker Must Die. Yes. Rare. If you haven't seen John Tucker, if you haven't seen any of these movies, unlike me, like, we're going to ignore me. <laughs> I, I don't see anything. We've got her. We've, we're working on her. We're working I'm on it. I'm slowly but... trying to turn her into a horror movie fan right now, so we'll move to these after. Okay. After October. That's okay. that time. Fair. Um, it's spooky season. But, like, John Tucker Must Die is, like, one okay. of the most known ones. Like, class. Okay. Yeah, so. We haven't seen it until last year. It's fine. Fine. Um, but obviously, all these girls are trying to get on revenge on John because he's sleeping with multiple girls. Same thing with Max. Yeah. Um. Also, like, should I mention this before? Max isn't that cute. So, like, he's really not. Girl, <laughs> how did so you better. beg Tara, Andrea, and all of these other girls? I just don't get it. Yeah. It's probably the money. <laughs> probably. Eleanor, however. Sam? Sam? <laughs> Listen. Maya Hawk is just so cool. <laughs> she is really fine. So, she and is. the voice and everything. Like I'm just like... She's a very nice voice. It's like very... I, I just, I couldn't say no. If she asked. Once again, Sam... <laughs> Yeah, and also at the end when, like, Cammy's like, who even says that anymore? And she's like, cool people. And, like, her raspy voice, I'm like, wow. Sam? Like, <laughs> um, I do keep seeing that this film be compared to Strangers, Strangers on the Train, in the yeah, Train. I've never Strangers seen on that. the Train. It's from 1951. I don't even know what it's about. I will read you the synopsis. I like Asi- older movies, but I don't like that old of movies. I'm so oh, but the stuff is really good. A psychotic socialite confronts a pro tennis star with a theory on how to complete str- complete strangers can. Let me re- go back and read that. <laughs> a psychotic socialite confronts a pro tennis star with a theory on how two complete strangers can get away with murder. A theory that he plans to imp- implement. Okay. It does sound good. It does. And the men of the 50s are a little fine. Oh, Oh, this is definitely the guy. Is this... Is he on the... Hold on. I've never seen It's a Beautiful Life. But this man looks like the guy from It's a Beautiful Life. It's a wonderful life. I was going to say, I, I'm like, is it a wonderful life? Once again, I've never seen this movie. I Me hate either. that. It's so oh. depressing, apparently. Why would I want to watch that? It is. It's not James Stewart. I apologize. It kind of looked like him, though. Yeah, I feel like there are definitely more... Like I references we might be missing. Oh, absolutely. But these are like the ones sticking out. Also, I guess you would kind of maybe say like Drea 
has kind of similarities to Rory Gilmore in the fact that they're like doing everything they can going to a big private school to be able to go to like an Ivy League but also honestly come the time Rory's in Yale Dre is a way better person Rory kind of sucks at that point okay but I think that like similarity of like going to private school just to get into yeah Yale is a big thing then she doesn't get into Yale what's this depressing yeah but then she gets into Yale yeah, I don't get it. Neither do I. Mm-hmm. Do we have anything else to say? I think we hit on everything that yeah. we could remember. I'm so sorry that this video or this episode was so low energy. I don't think either of us have energy now. <laughs> No, we don't. For whatever um, reason, I feel so just not brain functioning today. No. I was going to ask you if you actually wrote a real review, but you didn't. I did, actually. You did? I posted it on my new um, Instagram uh, filmographer, if anyone would like to follow. I'm a shitty friend, so I don't know. No, it's okay. It's totally fine, because I just posted about it on Twitter, so I didn't tell anybody. What is it? Film? Filmographile. Gotcha. Yep. Um, so my actual review, I said, I'm a teenage girl, we're psychopaths, the quote from the movie. And then I said, Do Revenge took so many cues from classic 2000s teen films. Think Clueless, Mean Girls, 10 Things I Hate About You, and Jawbreaker, and created the ultimate nostalgia piece. It is so perfectly reminiscent of the early 2000s and fits into that guilty pleasure slot we reserve for movies of that time. The chemistry between Mia, Maya Hawk and... Camila Mendes is electric. The story is so fun and different from your typical films. And that plot twist, it was just a cherry on top. It was so well executed, I was left agape. Please, please make more movies like this. It fills such a societal need. (laughs) My only qualm is that it felt like it got a little too messy after the twist reveal, but it bounced back fairly well. And while I would have preferred a more in-depth reconciliation, the the scene of them driving off Thelma and Louise style more than made up for it. I'll just say it. It may be among the best films of 2022. A must watch. Yeah. Very nice. Did you make that collage? Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> um, mine is just, I said this before, I just assume that whenever there are two powerful females in a movie, they're going to kiss and I have to stop having that mentality. Okay. And then my, um, there's some good reviews on this movie. They're just stupid right? and funny. I said, Maya Hawk, number one Nepo baby. I pray she continues playing lesbian characters for the rest of her career inject the aesthetic into my veins right fucking now i know i love reading the ones that i like liked yeah my hawk loving woman gotta be one of my fave genres (laughs) one of the ones i like easy literally wishes he made a plot list this good someone said amy dunn would be proud of these girls and that's a gone girl reference just saying say once again need to watch (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> queer Maya Hawk naming her pet lizard Oscar winner Olivia Colman, Sophie Turner screaming you're a cunt in her British accent at Camila Mendez Maya calling Camila revenge mommy your honor it's simply queer Gen Z feminist filmmaking at its finest mm-hmm. oh yeah and then someone said so good but removing half a star because Maya and Camila had too much chemistry to not kiss for real <laughs> just girls doing girly things you facts <laughs> I think someone gave, like, a very in-depth one. There's... Wait, hold on. Oh, it's this one. Just... Are you ready? Into every generation, a sleigh of a teen movie is born. (laughs) One film in all the world. A chosen one. It alone will wield the strength and skill to create screenshot and GIF-worthy moments, deliver quotable one-liners, and influence how teenagers dress to start the spread of LOLs and the swell of the gagging. It is the slayage. And I just realized now that is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> That is literally the quote that they tell Buffy when she becomes a vampire slayer. <laughs> that makes so much sense. I love that. That, that, that made me laugh. Oh, wait, I saw one step before. Oh, God, where is it? This is going to rock the socks off the teens in the 2030s, 2040s. Yeah. This one, 
it. Like this is literally already definitive the, the teen movie of defending the team movie of the 2020s a new standard set i was obsessed with from beginning middle and to the end 30 year old playing 17 year old will always be valid to me and to top it all off sarah michelle geller had a minor role no complaints no notes the plot and the twist and the third act are already cinema history and the cast was excellent all around Mila mendez and risha are so famous to me and maya hawk is already changing the game for nepotism ba- babies everywhere i love it Someone also said Maya Hawk could do Gone Girl, but Rosamund Pike could never do Do Revenge. Yes. Someone said, hold on now. This was actually really cute, but imagine how good it would be as a slasher. Someone said that should take place in college. And honestly, I don't. I think high school is good. I think high school is good for the like sex tape plot line, but I yeah. think it could have been unhinged in college. Yes. But I don't think a sex tape would have been as much of a scandal in college. No. Don't Too many not. people. Also, there isn't as much of a hierarchy in college. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sorry, teen movies in college just don't hit as hard. No, definitely not. Someone quoted, and she's only a junior, proceeds to show a 28-year-old woman. <laughs> so fair. So fair. Ugh. Like, at what age do you stop playing a teenager? When you stop looking young enough to. <laughs> Wait. Oh, my God. Did then we again, mention- John Travolta was, like, 35 when he was playing Danny in Greece, But also, none of them looked young enough to be a teenager so Greece is definitely not the no but they were seniors in high school so okay but some of them looked like 50 year old men who have a mortgage and a family so that's fair what was it Keenan Thompson's quote from the Emmy speech that Zendaya is 26 now and she's still young enough to play high schoolers but she's old too old to date Leonardo DiCaprio (laughs) But good for him. He we finally moved up to the age of twenty seven with yes, Gigi Hadid. We did. <laughs> yes, we did. Good for him. Yes. Also, Leo, I have still got five more years. If six if you if you bumped up to uh twenty seven. So <laughs> I'm available. I am down. I Just can't. saying, when you're watching this, which I know you are call me or email me at enter the fangirls at gmail.com okay yeah please sponsor us honestly um i don't know if we're taking a break next week Who um knows? unless we record thursday and you still somehow get it up for friday who knows <laughs> who knows um don't hold your breath yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us on this episode of Enter the Fangirls. You can keep up with us on social media. Our Twitter is Enter Fangirls, and our YouTube and Instagram are Enter Fangirls. Make sure you follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts, and we can't wait for you to join us on our next episode. Once again, I'm Lexi. I'm Sam, and this has been Enter the Fangirls. <laughs> <laughs>